All in-end recognition methods developed to this date require user-specific databases. The major contribution of our work is in the development of the user-independent in-end recognition system. Our method utilizes data from optical sensors taken from multiple subjects in different environments. The control framework of a powered prosthesis is implemented by a hierarchical system that consists of three layers. The top layer is the high-level controller. It is responsible for identifying the activity modes and the user's volitional intent. The next layer is the mid-level controller. It receives the classification results from the high-level controller and converts this data into the desired device state. The final layer is the low-level controller. It estimates the error between the desired state and the current state, and reduces the error by forcing actuators using feedforward and feedback control loops. Our in-end recognition system works as follows. The input of the system is the DEF and confidence frames. These inputs come from DEF camera DS325. We start by filtering the DEF image using confidence measures in order to remove noise in the data. Then, we generate two DEF difference images in order to incorporate motion information. Next, we take the two difference images and the corresponding DEF image and divide them into rectangular subregions. From each subregion, we extract four features – mean, standard deviation, minimum, and maximum values. Then, we classify the resulting feature vector using support vector machines. Finally, we apply majority voting filters to improve the reliability of the activity mode switching. This video illustrates the setup that was used to collect data from the participants. DS325 DEF camera is strapped to the right knee and GoPro Hero 4 camera is strapped to the chest. A notebook computer is placed in the backpack and used for acquiring the data from the DEF camera via USB connection. DS325 makes 45 degrees with the ground normal. On the top right, you can see the DEF image stream from DS325, and on the bottom right, the RGB image stream from GoPro. We collected data from 12 healthy subjects, comprised of 7 male and 5 female participants. Each subject was instructed to follow random routes on campus and engage in all 5 activity modes in each trial – standing, walking, running, stair ascent, and stair descent. The data gathering experiment was conducted in two sessions, making altogether 20 trials per subject. Each session was conducted on a different day to ensure that the subjects don't end off the sensors. Later, an expert using the information from the GoPro video labeled each of the collected DEF image frame with one of the five activity modes. Data from eight subjects was used for the intent recognizer training, while the data set from the rest four subjects was left out for testing. This graph presents the SVM classification results for the four testing subjects using the classifiers training with increasing number of subject data. As the number of subjects increases, the accuracy of the classification improves as well, from 87.5% to 94.1%. This table shows the confusion matrix of the SVM classifier for the four testing subjects. The overall accuracy achieved was 94.1%. We demonstrate the efficiency of our method with an experimental video. In this video, the subject was asked to follow a random tour that includes standing, walking, running, and going up and down the stairs. We used the voting filter for robust activity mode switching. Out of 769 activity mode transitions of the four test subjects, 717 of them were detected within 0.5 seconds of the transition. On the other hand, 49 transitions, which didn't really happen, were detected. These false transitions show that additional sensor streams might be needed to improve the reliability of the framework. We presented our user-independent intent recognition framework for lower limb wearable robots. The features extracted from the DEF camera data are classified using support vector machines. 
The future work will entail other classification methods, including deep learning, and the use of other sensors, such as inertial motion capture sensors. For more information, please visit our laboratory website at arms.nu.edu.kz.